we have in today a SNES. This one you might notice is quite a bit smaller and different than the ones you normally see. This one's an American version of the SNES Junior. These are much rarer, especially in the UK, in terms of getting hold of. I think in Japan and the US they're fairly common. This one's come in because it keeps blowing power supplies and just doesn't work anymore. And the customer's also paid for a full recap and a power LED plus the clean RGB output. So let's just quickly take a look. So this is the SNES Junior in the US and you can see it's basically just as wide as the game and a lot slimmer overall. Power supply is the same as a US SNES and if we compare that to a Japanese Super Famicom you can see there's a few differences. So the Super Famicom is slightly different in the grey. Whether this is age I'm not sure but this definitely looks a different grey. The games as well in Japan are different. They are the same as the UK. So here's a UK game, a Japanese game, and an American game. You can see if you compare them, they are different in size. And even though the Japanese ones go there, they don't lock in, and the American ones physically don't fit. So there's mods you can do to make these work, including installing region-free chips. But that's the general difference between you know the different regions. The customer sent in his own power supply and with that connected to 110 volts if we measure the tip here you can see we have no voltage so the power supply is dead and the customer supplied another newer power brick so let's just test that and this one's fine so considering he says that it's got no power let's probably power this from bench first anyway if we take a look inside we can see it's basically just a mini snes it's got very similar layout, just a much smaller form factor. Now we can see in here, there's the fuse, that's the first check. And it is a blown fuse, which is rare. Let's chuck a new one on. And before we solder a new fuse on, let's just inject 5 volts here to be safe. And we can see we've got 100 milliamps, so there's no short. So the new fuse is on, let's just give this a try now. And there we go. So, we've got audio. Yep, we've got video, obviously composite. So it looks like the only issue on this, fault-wise, is the fuse. Next up, the customer's paid for a full recap, and that's all the old caps off, and new caps on. Next up, for a power LED mod on the original, it actually has a light. But you can see on the Junior, there's no power light. What we'll do is put a power light where the on little dot is, and just pilot hole that out and then fill it with epoxy to give it a nice clear finish and an LED. We'll use a 1.4mm drill bit, which fits perfectly in the hole. And that gives us now a nice seamless hole to get the LED to shine through. We'll use this 3mm purple LED, and what I'm going to do is just epoxy the LED here, I'm going to use this Z epoxy. This is by far the best one I've tried so far because it's set rapid and hard. So there's the LED epoxied in, wired to the 5 volt through a 150 ohm resistor. And if we turn on, we can see it's working this side. And if we turn on here, you can see you get a nice, really subtle power light. So it looks really nice in person, might come across a bit blue on camera, but that is definitely um, an ultraviolet colour. So the last step is to add RGB. The juniors still output RGB on the encoder chip, but they just never make it to the AV port on the back. So all we have to do is install a clean RGB and wire in the pins from the input here and wire them to the AV port here. So that's the wires tapped off and passed through this unused capacitor hole for neatness. And then on the back, I've just stuck the clean RGB here and wired it into the AV port. We just need to tune these now and test. And just before I reassemble, I've added a double strain relief here and a double strain relief here. So if anyone opens it unexpectedly and tugs, they're going to tug the wire, not the solder joints. And now putting that all together, it's all reassembled. We have a nice power LED and hopefully perfect RGB and there you go you can see that's absolutely perfect so these juniors I believe have a variation of the one chip which gives them the best RGB output 
by default. So once the clean RGB is on, you get this really nice and crisp RGB. So that's it for this one, guys. I'll catch you in the next.